Welcome to Ogilav Nanagus. Conversations about Irish mythology with the story archaeologist Chris Thompson and Isolde Carmody at www.storyarchaeology.com Series 1, Mythical Women Episode 5, The Search for Bridget The Story of Brig It was the first time Keening had been heard in the green land of Ireland. The poetry of mourning, the ritual of the eulogy. Brig keened for her lost son, her impetuous red-headed boy, Ruathorn. Ruathorn was dead, killed by the Spear of Govnu and the smithcraft of the Dodonan, killed as a spy in the forge. Why did it have to be her son who was chosen? Why did it have to be him, not hard the answer, she herself had played a part in his choosing? It had been her choosing to give allegiance to Bresh, a man of the Fomoira. Oh, he was beautiful, yes, and wise in the ways of the land, but he was cruel and miserly. It had seemed fitting when Nurda, leader of her people, the Dodonan had been maimed. It had seemed fitting then to choose a chieftain from among the Fomoira, those strange sea people who shared their land. It had seemed fitting then. Bresh, her husband, had put her people under a great burden of tax, keeping them in poverty. Why, he had even set her own father, the Dagda himself, to work building great ditches of earth. And battle had not been averted. Now Lou, the Ildonok, master of many crafts, led her people. Lou, who, like Ruathorn, was a son and a grandson of both the Fomoria and the Dodonan. Lou, with his Fomorian mother and Dodonan father. Ruathorn, with his Dodonan mother and his Fomorian father. So alike. Only Ruathorn was dead. All had gone well, at least for the Dodonan, and now the Fomoira were worried. They sent for Ruathorn, one of the few who was welcome in both camps. Why is it, they asked the boy, that the weapons of the enemy are never blunted? Why is it that the warriors we injure return to face us again each day? And Ruathorn, her son, his father's son, had answered them. Not hard to tell. The warriors are renewed, dipped in the waters of the well of Slania, Dienkek's well of health. Oh, not hard to tell. The weapons are resharpened each day in the skilful forge of Govnu the smith. And Ruathorn had been sent to the forge of Govnu to kill the smith, to stop his skill. And she had let him go. The red-haired youth had found his welcome in the fiery forge, as always. Make me a spear, he asked, the ruddy flames lighting his smile, and Govnu set his hand to the hammer and the iron to the anvil, and when the shape of the spear was sharp, Kredna Kert framed it with rivets and looked to set it to the shaft. And Crone took it, finished it with her blood-red mark, and she gave it to the red-haired youth. And this was the moment that Ruathorn made his choice. With a cry, he lifted the spear and let it fly. It struck the smith, struck him there in his own forge. It wounded him, but it did not fell him. Govnu plucked the spear from his flesh and cast it once more. It struck Ruathorn full in the breast, struck him, and he fell, red in his own blood. There, in the forge, the youth died. And Brig mourns for her son, who will not be dipped in the waters of the healing well. And the cadences of her keening are heard in both camps. So today we're examining the stories of Brig, or Bridget, the pre-Christian daughter of the Dagda, and also the much-loved saint of Kildare. Now, I chose to tell a story that comes from the mythological cycle. It's right at the centre of the story of Moitura, right in the middle of the battle. But it's the only story about Brig I could find, and it's certainly the only mention of her son. Now, traditionally, as far as I know, Bridget's associated with, now let me think, Smithcraft, healing, poetic inspiration. So do you think we found her in this story? Well, let's start by looking more closely at this story from the Kath Magaturid. Um, it certainly is Brig's only appearance in this saga, and indeed it's really her only appearance within the whole mythological cycle. 
she doesn't appear elsewhere in any stories or in even in the metrical Dinyanicus. Well, not anywhere. No, there are some mentions of her from the Lever Gavola, the Book of Invasions, but that's not a consistent, you know, she's sometimes given as the mother of the sons of Tyrion, yeah. but that's not consistent well, either. She doesn't do anything. No, she, does, she doesn't even play a part. So um, really, this is the, this episode from Maitura is the only, is her only real walk on part if you like it's interesting isn't it this this well-known person this pre-christian um some say goddess mm. and the the, the, uh, the some say the daughter of the director or even the mother of the director but mm. that's it one story well what about Ruthel? again this is his only appearance um if we look at the story we've just heard the other characters involved Gaifnu and Krednacher and Luchta uh, even Bresh they all are well established they, they go right through the story of Maitura and into other uh, mythological stories but as far as Ruthon's in concerned this is the only place he appears and he appears just in order to die 